Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is dedicated to some team tips, so let's go ahead and jump right into this, go into squad. We're gonna jump into my second team since more conventional makes more sense. Now, when it comes to this, the first slot is usually a defender or a striker. The reason why defenders and strikers are the first two slots is because they have high evasion, you know, in the form of a striker, and in the form of a defender, they have high defense. If you go to my Google spreadsheets right here and you scroll up, this is going to be some descriptions on the characters strikers having high evasion like we said earlier defenders having high defense now the reason why you want these characters in the very front is because they also have decent cc or decent crowd control what do i mean by that if you jump into their skills special skill right here for irie alfred she is able to swing her shield and do some knockback and then with her ultimate skill she's able to swing her shield some more create some shockwaves and also do some cc so what happens here is she's able to keep the opponents at bay from attacking slots three and four and and not to mention her passive skill also allows strikers to have a little bit more survivability i cover it more in my other video r and n but this is why she's going to be in the first slot because she can give passive buffs to others but she can also cc now when it comes to strikers like cindy looper she actually does have some cc in the form of her special skill where she inflicts aoe and they're sort of stunned while they're getting you know chainsawed by her and then her divine berserker she can also do a little bit of stuns by generating a shock wave that levitates all surrounding targets this is something that I sort of want us to look into when you're building your first two slots out because you want these two units to essentially control what's going on in the crowd all right and then the third and fourth slots these are usually your DPS sort of support roles so I put Kim Sambin because obviously she's one of the ones who has a lot of firepower and then when it comes to Shinji Ya she also provides a little bit of support with her alpha tricks leader where she's doing you know attack speed and providing like more buffs to everyone it's one of those things that you sort of see what works for your specific team you can run either more dps so you can outpower or outgun the enemy or you can run more support like behavior it depends on how much the enemy is overpowering your team that is going to be like how the first four slots work you know more defender you sort of cc keep the enemy at bay and then the three and four slots are usually your dps sort of support roles depending on how aggressive or how contained you want to be if you want to be more contained then you run you know a ranger and then a support if you want to be more aggressive then you would run nothing but you know a ranger and a sniper because snipers usually have more dps capabilities and then from then onward the fifth slot is usually reserved for a tank now some of you are probably wondering why is my team like sort of set up like this why isn't another tank like you're talking about if you look at my average cost it says 2.5 the reason being is because all of these units put together have a very low cost rate this is more advanced team techniques where you want to have your units always on the field in case someone dies and this is where it flows into what's your strategy of your team. I want to keep low cost units so I can constantly deploy units, hence why it's not the conventional thing because usually you would put a defender right here. So it's one of those things where you have to pay attention. What are your capabilities? What do you want to do? Do you want a high cost like team and your units are always able to stay alive? So like, for example, Irie Alfred would never die and Cindy Looper would never die. So we'd have more healers in the front. So I would put, you know, Evelyn or Claudia Nelson right there. And then I would put my DPS here and then I would have a tank right here, all right? This would make my team have more survivability. The way I set it up with this setup, I am expecting that my team will die a lot more frequently because I also don't want Cindy Looper and Irie Alfred to stay too long on the field because I want, you know, other units to sort of cycle in as I'm going through it because their tankiness is sort of finite in some ways, all right? Now, when it comes to the first team, it's sort of more unconventional because you have Kyle, but the thing is, is Kyle has this taunt shield strategy bulwark. It's very effective at doing some CC the gravity gun is really good at CC because it really does act like gravity and it pulls some of the units in it's CC in its own way not to mention it's relatively killer when he actually uses this okay so he is like in some ways a tank and then comes with Ling Xin she is a striker she has high evasion but she's also one of the few characters who's a energy battery you can see that in her skills that she has the ability to instantly restore one deployment cost and then on her ultimate skill she will restore three deployment costs so I put her front and center because that will make it so that I can cast more units or deploy more units as the fight is pretty much prolonging on and then I put Yang Harim here so that I can keep these two units alive and then I put the Hound so that he can do a little bit of knockbacks in case someone gets too close to Kyle Wong and then I put Sylvia at the very last now technically I can go with this approach and put the Hound last but usually what happens with my specific team is that everyone gets way too close to Kyle or Lin Xian is dead but I'd rather put you know the Hound on this 
slot in particular. Sometimes it's about knowing when your team sort of fails and how things sort of work out before you run the teams. And here is going to be some more explanations in case you want to know what do these roles do and what's so important about them, right? Rangers, of course, being able to do more DPS, Kyle being the exception because he can do like all sorts of roles. And then, like I said earlier, you can always run supports in case you want to be more defensive. And then, of course, on the floor slot, it should be like a DPS. You can run a tower in case you like want to defend yourself in PvP for some reason, or you can run a siege unit. Honestly, up to you but that's how i want us to first see the first four slots the first four slots are the most important and then afterwards it's kind of like based off of your personal preference because the first four slots kind of dictate how your team is going to function if your first four slots is like you know defender striker healer then obviously you're going to be more defensive if you're running something where it's like lin Xian and kyle and then two more dps and then a yang harim then you are obviously more aggressive and you want to cycle your units more quickly and this is the reason why some units aren't rated as high because their cost is so high it's not really worth it to run them with Irie Alfred and pretty much Cindy Looper right here in the front I can constantly recast them and use them as my team is pretty much flowing all right let's go ahead and run special defense training so you can see like some of the CC in action and how this works right so the hound is specifically here to knock back the opponents that are going to be coming and then of course Irie Alfred is also there for that specific purpose now I know I'm not running too many units but the whole purpose of this is to show a demonstration and I know my units are like really like high leveled but look at Lin Xian when she pretty much pops up she's going to be casting her special skill and she's going to be knocking some opponents back and then the tank pretty much pops up and they get knocked back that's the whole point of this and Kyle's keeping them at bay in some ways the Yang Harim pops up but now Irie Alfred is here to pretty much deal some knockbacks and push the enemy backwards that's how you sort of want to view your teams in some ways where everyone's sort of making up for each other's mistakes and you can see here the gravity gun has appeared and now Kim Songbin is here to pretty much provide you know the firepower to kill the rest of the opponents and there we go we have kept the enemies back in some situations just note that this is also like a DPS check sort of stage so it's one of those things that you sort of want to look into as you're flowing into the game. When you deal with these simulations, make sure that your units are all leveled and stuff. All right, so I managed to actually clear anti-air number five with this team in particular. What's really crazy is Kathy Wade was pretty clutch. Same with the Hound and Irie Alford. Reason being is because I upgraded their skills because of the fact that they get a little bit more tanky. Kathy Wade is able to deal a little bit more DPS, just a bit enough to hit these guys hard enough to win this stage a lot of it has to do with rng getting like the opponents properly distanced i learned this from infamous jake the guy who's pretty much able to run more free-to-play teams and stuff and i like this stage because it makes it seem like the game is more free-to-play friendly than it is in some ways because you don't have to run like ultra meta units granted i am heavily investing into my characters but the point is is i am actually able to farm a level 90 stage because a lot of the times when you farm like these level 90s it's it's like oh my gosh it's absolutely impossible unless i have enough firepower except for this stage in particular you can see here i'm saving kyle's ult because sometimes he dumbingly like uses it and i just don't like it when he just spams it out of nowhere so we can use it in this moment where young harim can pretty much cast her ult and after that kyle can use his ult and then things can be a little bit better maybe i should have waited until the swarms popped up but the swarms aren't as bad we'll pretty much see right here if my timing was incorrect or my decision was incorrect all right we are managing to kill the swarms right there the red dude is it the annoying part it's like the little green guys yes i think this is gonna be win heck yeah this is the way you want to do it it's like small things with timing and everything and powering up your units to have higher skill levels and i just want to showcase the skill levels for my n and r units because those are like the reasons why i'm even able to clear this stage because of the large pools of health they have so Irie alford she has her hp plus 20 percent not to mention the damage taken is reduced and then if i go to tank chan right here she is going to get plus 20 percent hp making her extra extra thick so now she has like 45,000 health not to mention like the gear and stuff so she is going to be very capable of defending herself and then kathy wade right here i managed to get her skill to a couple percentage when it comes to her attack capabilities and then of course she has more damage capabilities with her sonic bullet but now i can also get this to 20 percent i don't even have that yet so that means she'll be able to give even more buffs or have even
even more buffs and all that stuff i have to say like these n and r units they're absolutely fantastic in case you want to play on somewhat of a budget because a lot of the ssr units they're going to be difficult to raise and the thing that i want to annotate the most when it comes to this is that now that i have unlocked anti-air level 90 i can essentially spam my tickets in here and get more cubes to upgrade my ssr characters so this is the secret to progression in some ways where you raise your n and r units so you can tackle these modes so you can get more of these apt core boxes this is the progression in this game if you're free to play you know you raise those units if you're a whale then you can just straight up raise the ssrs and go forward but anyways if you made it this far in today's video consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment follow me on twitch follow me on twitter once we have 20,000 subs we're doing a giveaway thanks so much for watching good luck on your team builds and have yourself a fantastic day see you in the next one